and welcome to the wheel shop. Here I hand build over 300 wheels every year. Wheels for all disciplines, road, mountain, gravel, touring, and like today, track wheels for the velodrome. The tensioned wire spoke bicycle wheel is truly a marvel of engineering. Light and strong, strong enough to carry many times its own weight. That's due to the tension in the spokes that tie the rim and the hub together. But the key to building a strong durable wheel is to have the correct amount of tension. Usually that's a value specified by the rim maker. The rim maker will determine what is the maximum or the optimal operating tension to make the wheel strong and durable. So this means that we need some kind of a device to actually measure the tension. In this case we're using a tension meter. So we check the tension on the spoke with the meter. What that actually does is measures the deflection of the spoke against the spring that's inside the meter. And we're averaging around 0 0.31, 0 0.30 in that range. Then we go to our calibration chart and we look at, uh, okay, so 0 0.30 deflection on a two millimeter spoke, very important is 115 kilograms of force. That's kind of at the low end for this wheel, but uh, it's in the acceptable range. Calibration chart uh, really can only be considered a general guide, not a precise one, because, well, for one thing, they don't list every conceivable type of spoke. And even uh, with the, um, you know, the same size and uh, shape of spoke, like a round uh, two millimeter or 14 gauge spoke such as these, they can vary between brands, uh, surface coatings and treatments and various things like that can affect the reading at the same tension. So that brings us to the main topic of today's video and that is the tension meter calibration fixture. Now this is a device that I uh, fabricated myself almost 10 years ago. I uploaded a, a YouTube video in January of 2013 after I built it and um, after that it generated quite a lot of discussion on uh, mechanics forums and things like that and inspired uh, a lot of others to do similar builds and uh, I will put a link to the original video at the end of this one. Uh, basically uh, the idea is Fairly simple. It's a, quite a generic design. It's basically just a, a frame that uh, I have mounted on my spoke storage rack here on hinges so I can access behind it. And uh, it's a, as I said, a, a rectangular steel frame and a 200 uh, kilogram capacity crane scale and uh, a means to suspend a spoke between the scale and a spoke holding fixture at the bottom there and the way it works is uh, when we turn the scale on we can actually tension the spoke by means of the screw either top or bottom until we get to the reading that we want to calibrate the tension meter to. Okay so I'm just going to switch it on here check that we're registering kilograms because that's the units we want to measure in and then we'll apply tension to the spoke until we get it to the reading that we want. We're going to go for 120 kilograms because that's roughly the range that we want to be in for this particular rim. Uh, 120, between 120 and 130, but 120 would be acceptable. We'll, we'll set the uh, scale there so that we can check the meter reading at that amount. So that's 120.4. That's dropping a little bit. Okay, so we're right about the 120 kilograms of force on the spoke. So now we will check it with the tension meter. We're at zero. Okay, so uh, 
a reading of 0.29 is what we get. So we were reading uh, between 0 0.30 and 0 0.31, so we're a little bit less than the, uh, the 120 kilograms on that wheel, which is still in the acceptable range, but uh, we'll, we'll probably uh, we'll take it up a notch just to to um, get it where it's supposed to be. So anyhow, that brings us to the scale itself, and how do we know how accurate that scale is? So what we're going to do is, I'm actually going to take the scale out of the unit and take it to a scale service and installation uh, company in town. I've already made arrangements with them, it's just uh, we need to arrange a time. And they're going to check the scale for accuracy for me, just to make sure that we're getting uh, proper and accurate readings. Okay, so I have had the scale tested. Originally, the plan was to uh, do a video shoot at the uh, scale service company, and they had originally agreed to that. However, they are in the process of moving to a new uh, facility, and the place was kind of an upheaval, so uh, they just did a quick uh, test with, they hung uh, four 20 kilogram uh, calibration weights from it, so a uh, total of 80 kilograms and uh, registered 79.9 kilograms. So uh, I think we can take it from that that uh, this scale is pretty darn accurate. Uh, accurate enough for our purposes at least. So, All right, so full disclosure, I actually have two of these scales. And this is the one that has been in the calibration jig all along. This is the one that I had tested at the scale company. Uh, the plan was to take this unit in and uh, do the video shoot with this one and have it tested as well. But um, since that's not going to be happening now, instead what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to compare the two of them by lifting the same weight. And uh, yeah, so if this one's accurate and this one weighs the same, then it's accurate too. So to do the lift, to test the scales, I'm going to use my engine hoist. And of course, what self-respecting man doesn't have an engine hoist in his garage? <laughs> yeah, there it is, all disassembled in the back corner. It doesn't take up much room, but anyhow, I'll dig that out, set it up, and uh, yeah, we'll rig a lift. All right, so I'm rigged for a lift with uh, the scale that has already been checked. And I got a half a dozen landscaping rocks there. Uh, don't know what they weigh, but I think between a half a dozen of them, there should be enough to give us enough weight to um, get a good comparison. So anyway, we'll switch her on and hoist away. Okay, we got a weight of 69.2 kilograms. I'll zoom in there so you can see that. 
recording. Sixty nine point zero. So compare sixty nine point two, sixty nine point zero. Uh, might have had a little bit more of the uh, chain weight hanging from it. I don't know, but in any case, I think that's an acceptable deviation. So I'm uh, I'm satisfied with that. All right. So it looks like we've got two accurate scales, and this one will be going back into the calibrator. Okay. So that little exercise uh, determined that. The scales match and because this one was tested and found to be accurate we now know that this one is accurate as well uh, one thing that the um, guy at the scale company pointed out was that because it has this CE marking on the back uh, that means that it's approved for sale in the European Union uh, I don't know if it's equivalent to what you know our CSA mark here in Canada or, or what but uh, doing a bit of looking online uh, into uh, you know what qualifies a product for CE kind of sent me down a real rabbit hole <laughs> I'd have to have a lot more time to, to read up on that but uh, essentially his point was that having that mark is a good thing so uh, we'll take it from there that it, uh, it's a good thing anyhow okay so test complete uh, happy we've got two accurate scales the link to the original video that I referred to earlier I'll be putting that up right about now, should appear on your screen, and um, yeah, check that out, you can see the original build. Meanwhile, I'll go back to using this uh, with confidence, and uh, yep, catch you in the next video. Bye for now.